getting some on Sunset, fussing about kissing, and two-timing both his baby mamas? From Hollywood heartthrob to ornery old boy, here's Hugh Grant's twisted story. The best tea you've ever had in your life. In one of the most infamous scandals of the 90s, Hugh Grant cheated on his longtime girlfriend, beloved actress and model Elizabeth Hurley, with sex worker Divine Brown in 1995. Unfortunately for all involved, this late-night romp became front-page tabloid fodder after cops caught Grant in his car with his pants down. As Brown later recalled to the Daily Mail, he sounded a bit like Prince Charles but tried to cover up his accent. In the throes of passion, Grant reportedly kept tapping his foot on the car brake leading the police directly to the scene on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. The actor was then arrested and fined $1,800, while Brown faced harsher repercussions and was sentenced to 180 days in jail. Although the tryst was treated as a joke in the media, its effect on Hurley was no laughing matter. When the star found out about her boyfriend's infidelity, she was crushed, as she told the British Press Association at the time. For many years, I have turned to Hugh for help during difficult times, and so now I am very much alone. This is all very painful for me. In a now legendary appearance on The Tonight Show, Grant apologized for his actions, telling Jay Leno, I think you know in life uh, pretty much what's a good thing to do and what's a, a bad thing, and um, I did a bad thing, and there you have it. He also thanked Hurley for supporting him throughout the ordeal. The couple stayed together for five more years before calling it quits in 2000. For many fans, Grant will always be William Thacker, the skittish bookstore owner in the 1999 rom-com Notting Hill. In the flick, Grant's heart is stolen by Hollywood actor Anna Scott, played with gleeful charm by Julia Roberts. Although their on-screen rapport seemed sincere and wholesome, as far as Grant was concerned, it wasn't. During the film's release, he admitted to being intimidated by his superstar colleague, telling E! News, uh, I was entirely terrified of her. I still am, to a certain extent. But strangely enough, after a, a day or two of rehearsal, I realized that we would click in some way. Although he claimed that he ultimately came to admire Roberts, he changed his tune just a few years later. Grant recalled kissing Roberts for the role, describing it to Oprah in 2004. Very big-mouthed. Um, <laughs> when I was kissing her, I was aware of a faint echo. She's one of the nicest people I ever met, Julia. <laughs> no, I, well, I wouldn't go that far. A-listers are notorious for acting like total prima donnas on set. And while Grant is able to poke fun at himself, he isn't immune to occasionally engaging in some diva-like behavior. Spotlight. Me. Bing. Grant confessed to behaving in a manner unbefitting an English gent when shooting Dungeons & Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. As he recalled with Total Film in 2023, I lost my temper with a woman in my eyeline on day one. I assumed she was some executive from the studio who should have known better. Then it turns out that she's an extremely nice local woman who was the chaperone of the young girl. Terrible. Although he apologized repeatedly to the woman, we can't help but wonder if the tantrum would have been acceptable to the actor if he had indeed been berating a studio exec. In 2011, Grant became a father for the very first time at 51. And no one was more surprised than Grant himself, who was enjoying a casual affair with Chinese actress Ting Lung Hong, who was nearly 20 years his junior. A spokesperson told The Times, While this was not planned, Hugh could not be happier or more supportive. A year after his first child was born, entrepreneur Anna Eberstein gave birth to Grant's second child in 2012. Things just got messier from that point, with Grant having another baby with Hong just two months later. The actor reportedly bought both his baby mama's multi-million dollar homes around the time of their respective pregnancies. Then, in 2015, he had another baby with Eberstein. Then another one three years later. He married Eberstein in 2018, but this, too, proved controversial when he was accused of getting hitched for passport reasons. Still, Grant himself told various outlets that this was indeed why he wed Eberstein. It seemed like the right time. She's a great person, the mother of three of my children. It was, it was the right thing to do. Hugh Grant was relentlessly hounded by the British press, and he was revealed as a key victim of the News of the World phone hacking scandal of 2011. That year, the actor wrote a piece for The New Statesman, detailing his horror at discovering that his phone was being tapped by journalists. He recalled bumping into News of the World whistleblower Paul McMullen entirely by chance and striking up a fake friendship with him so that he might reveal what really went down at the now-disgraced newspaper. I may have implicated myself bizarrely to Hugh Grant, of all people. 
recorded by Grant without his knowledge, McMullen implicated numerous high-profile individuals in phone hacking, including then-British Prime Minister David Cameron, whom he alleged was close pals with the paper's editor. He also claimed the police were accepting bribes in exchange for releasing sensitive material. McMullen claimed that due to the A-lister's immense wealth, it was acceptable to hack Grant's phone. But the actor then questioned why it was justifiable for the paper to have hacked the phones of murder victims, like 13-year-old Millie Dowler. The news of the world went defunct amid the scandal, and Grant's relationship with the press grew increasingly sour. He was also heavily criticized for his assertion that he helped save the press from police spying, with The Guardian noting that it was the collective work of editors that enabled the legislation. For years, Grant exhibited an admittedly foul temper when dealing with the media. In 2007, he was arrested for attacking paparazzo Ian Whitaker, who recalled to the Evening Standard, I said, give us a smile, please, and he looked really angry. He kicked me hard three or four times, then kneed me in the groin. Grant, who was charged with assault, offered his own recollection of events, telling Chatty Mann, I did once lose my temper, twice lost my temper very badly, and twice got arrested explaining that even he couldn't get away with badgering a paparazzo. He admitted on the show. One time I, I attacked one and his, his friend was lurking around a corner and got pictures. And he likened the encounter to his fight with Colin Firth in Bridget Jones's diary and claimed he was then confronted by the photographer's pal. When I was feeling very manly and I said, you want some? Oh. And to my horror, he said, yeah, I do. Grant also confessed to using a plastic tub of baked beans as a weapon. Two years later, he reportedly kicked a photographer in the groin while in New York City, according to TMZ. Then, in 2019, Grant generated controversy when he was reportedly filmed grabbing a woman's phone in Rome, falsely believing that she was a photographer. It turned out that the woman was actually head of Rome's municipal waste company. Ever since he discovered that the UK's government may have been complicit in phone hacking, Grant has rallied against the establishment. He may have played a bumbling prime minister in Love Actually, but he wasn't too pleased when former prime minister Boris Johnson went on to lead the country. Back in 2019, Grant furiously slammed Johnson, tweeting, off, you overpromoted rubber bath toy. Britain is revolted by you and your little gang of masturbatory prefects. After a myriad of controversy, from breaching the COVID lockdown rules that he implemented to making light of alleged sexual assaults, Johnson was finally ousted in 2022. Grant gleefully celebrated the prime minister's downfall, concocting a shady plan to troll the press following Johnson's resignation. Asking a favor from progressive activist Steve Bray, he tweeted, "'Morning, Steve. Do you by any chance have the Benny Hill music to hand?' Often parodied, the Benny Hill Show theme is a comical tune that was accompanied by absurdist events on the slapstick comedy series. Bray, who had previously played a parody song entitled Bye Bye Boris during Johnson's resignation speech, obliged and blasted the theme outside Parliament, just for Hugh Grant as requested here today at the Media Circus, the Benny Hill theme tune. Can't resist it. It's a circus, isn't it? Subsequently, the song also played during news reports covering Johnson's resignation. Grant has been known to feud with his co-stars on occasion, and according to The Guardian, actor Robert Downey Jr. couldn't stand Grant when the pair made the film Restoration in 1995. He reportedly called Grant a jerk, an asshole, a self-important, boring, flash-in-the-pan Brit. Grant admitted that he did indeed have a feud with Downey, but suggested that it was entirely one-sided. He told People in 2018. He took one look at me and wanted to kill me. Following Grant's interview, Downey took to Twitter to address the clash with Grant, posting, A lot has happened over two decades. I respect how Mr. Grant has matured as an artist and voice against violations of privacy. Let's break bread together soon, Hugh Grant. But Downey wasn't the only one who had a bad experience with the Brit. In 2012, Jon Stewart appeared at a fundraiser and slammed the actor as the worst guest he had ever welcomed onto The Daily Show. Stewart claimed that Grant was rude and entitled and objected to a clip that was played from his new movie at the time. Stewart claimed he's giving everyone the whole time and he's a big pain in the ass. Grant acknowledged on Twitter that he behaved like a jerk to Stewart. He then apologized and conceded that the former Daily Show host was right to call him out. Having played LGBTQ characters on both the big and small screens, 
We never expected Grant to take issue with the lifestyle in reality, but the actor has made some remarks that many consider to be homophobic. In 2011, Hugh was interviewed during England's rugby game against Scotland for the Six Nations Championship. He recalled playing the sport as a boy, telling Metro, I discovered it hurts less if you tackled hard than if you tackled like a queen. The star was swiftly called out, with one viewer tweeting, England scrapes a win, Hugh Grant throws in a casual bit of homophobia. The BBC, who aired the interview, subsequently apologized. Cosmopolitan argued that remarks like those made by Grant contribute to the widespread homophobia in British sport, and that then leads to the reluctance of LGBTQ athletes to come out. Notably, over a decade since Grant's interview, only two English Premiership rugby players have come out as LGBTQ+, Jack Dunn and Nick McCarthy. The following year, Grant again made controversial remarks. In an interview to promote, Did You Hear About the Morgans? He lamented that he didn't look as sexy as he had anticipated when donning cowboy attire for the role. He told CBS, I've seen the film and I look ridiculous. I look like some old lesbian. Blogger Hot Femme in the City criticized the actor for rehashing outmoded stereotypes that gay women have long been subjected to. During the famous red carpet interviews at the Oscars, Hollywood's elite know the drill. Gush platitudes, express astonishment and awe, and don't forget to name drop the designer you're wearing. But despite having attended award ceremonies over the past four decades, Grant wasn't playing by the rulebook at the 2023 Academy Awards. During an interview with model Ashley Graham, he gave bizarre, curt responses. When Graham asked who he was rooting for, he said, No one in particular. He then refused to give details about his suit or who made it. Graham continued with the routine line of questioning, praising the vet's role in Glass Onion. But Grant wasn't biting and reminded the model that he was barely in the film. I'm in it for about three seconds. Yeah, but yeah. still, you showed up and you had fun, right? Uh, almost. On Twitter, fans either came to Grant's defense or slammed the actor for his seemingly rude and entitled behavior. Podcaster Jamie B. Golden suggested that Graham herself deserved an Oscar for having to deal with Grant, posting, Don't walk the carpet if you don't want to talk about the actual Oscars. Meanwhile, TV host Trevor Scott tweeted, Why agree to an interview if you have no interest in participating? Chatting to TMZ, Graham addressed the controversy, quipping, You know what? My mama told me to kill people with kindness, so there you go.